Hey everyone, uh, hopefully a quick tutorial for you today. What we're going to do is we're going to decouple the printing of our game to the screen with our game logic. Okay, so we're going to kind of consolidate it. Now, a good example of this would be monster.c. Let's, let's look at the kill monster function. In our kill monster, we are printing this dot to the screen. Um, that shouldn't be happening. We should really just be killing our monster, which we do by setting monster alive to zero. So that function was doing two things. That's bad. So we're going to just fix that. And let's look at other examples. Move monster, no printing. Should just be moving the monster. And you might say, well, moving the monster and printing the monster are kind of the same thing. Well, not really. Because, um, well, we saw you could move the monster or you could kill the monster. And both of those things we were printing. So, like, which one is, is moving the monster, printing it, or is killing the monster, printing it? So, now when we're looking at these two functions, we can see these things, these two functions only do what they kind of say they're going to do. Now, here's another one. Set starting position. Should not print the monster. Okay, so... I think that's all of them. Let's just see up here. Yep, cool. Okay, and then same thing with our player, um, place player. Nope, should not have any printing. Yeah. Same thing here, this shouldn't be move. Um, get rid of that. Oh, this is this is a good function here. It's player move, and look at how many lines it has. But how many of these lines are actually moving the player? Only two. So we can seriously clean this up. And that is a much nicer function. Okay, so then we, we're going to add in a function that will draw the player. So void draw player. And then this is where all of our uh, player to screen output will go. And so we'll take in a player star player and it's going to do move print W and player position uh, Y player position X and our player's character is the at symbol, which I don't, do we have that? Um, do we have that in a struct? I wonder if we do. No, we don't. Okay. I was going to say if we, if we had that in a struct, it would almost be better because then we could change the, uh, the player symbol, but whatever, that's, that's good. Um, and then we'll also call the move function to our player's position. And that just means that after you after you call move print w, the cursor moves to the next spot. So this will just move it back to hovering over the player. It just looks nicer. Okay, so save that. Now do the same thing in monster. So I guess we'll do it at the end. Why not? I'm not sure what this is, so we're just gonna get rid of it and do void draw monster. It will again take in a monster star monster and we will do move print w monster position y and monster position x and monster has a variable called string which we will print out. Okay, cool. So let's see. Now in our level.c, we're going to add in a new function called draw level. And this function will also be void. It will take in a uh, level. So level star level. 
Now in our level code, we have a function down here called save level positions. It loops through the entire screen and saves each character um, into our uh, level tiles, uh, 2D array of characters, okay? So we can use that to reprint our level. Um, so we call, where are we here? Level.c. We call save level positions before we place our monsters and before we place the player. So this save level positions, it contains all the rooms and all the hallways, okay? So we will copy this code here because we're gonna be using the same loop. Get rid of that and that malloc and that. Okay, so this loops through our screen. We will call, normally we would call move print W and Y comma X and then something like level uh, tiles y x uh, but this will give us an error because move print w is expecting a string as the third argument and level tiles y x is a character so we're going to change this to move add char and that will fix those errors so here we're uh, printing tiles now we're going to print our monsters so print monsters and it's going to be another for loop. I'm going to introduce i as an index uh, just because. So then it's for i equals zero, i is less than level, and number of monsters. Whoops. Cool. And then uh, i plus plus. And then for each of those, it will be draw monster and it will be a level monsters at i and then we also need to draw our player so draw player and level i think we called it user for some strange reason okay so what this is going to do is yeah it's going to print all our tiles that we've saved in this tiles array then it's going to print the monsters and then the player okay so we need to add draw monster and draw player into our robe.h uh, so grab this and our robe.h is uh, so ugly so long definitely not good uh, i'll have we'll have to clean it up at some point um, but not this tutorial so draw player and then draw monster so many functions so confusing um okay so okay so let's see what happens if we run it now so we're going to open this in terminal uh cd up okay make Ooh, no errors so let's what happens we make run so we need a bigger screen <laughs> Uh, let's redo that. Cool. Okay, so we get our um, our level prints and our game hub, but uh, no monsters, no player. Cool. So let's call our draw level function now. It's right here. So we will call it from our game loop for now. So yeah, we can get rid of this and what we're going to do is we're going to call it at the end so we'll do draw level level and then print game hub will be here cool and we should have a clear as well so that will clear the screen yeah okay so let's run that so make make run now when we hit start game it kind of blocks for input so then after we go then it uh, starts going good so we're going to quickly fix that little blocking thing so we're going to move our char equals get char down here and 
we're going to say, well, it's not equal to Q. And we will initialize our char up here just to null, which I think is okay. So we'll hit make, make run, start game. It's not blocking anymore. And we can start playing immediately. Okay, so let's go kill a monster and we'll see one issue that we have. So clearly I've killed the spider. Spiders aren't very strong. And the corpse is still there, which who knows, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe you want monster corpse to stick around. You could then loot the monster corpse, things like that. But for now we don't, we want it to just disappear, uh, which it's not, which is cool because we can uh, mine experience. That's pretty sweet. Um, okay, so we'll fix that by going to monster.c and our draw monster it's drawing all our monsters even if the monster is dead so what we're going to say is if monster alive then we will uh, print it otherwise we will not yeah monster alive gets set to zero when a monster is killed so monster so zero will uh will be false we'll see, like if zero is false so this wouldn't run if that makes sense okay so make make run start game and the spiders disappears cool okay so we've done all this but what benefit does it give us well i'm going to show you one example where it might be cool so um when we're playing our game say we're like we're really into this game and we're we're gonna kill a goblin like this guy right here and then we're in this really cool room and we decide we want to go back to the menu for some reason so we hit Q and then we're like what well, okay we're gonna resume our game where'd my game go it's an entirely new game so that's something we can change now that we have our draw level uh, function so uh, it's a bit of a setup. First, we're going to do another another struct in here uh, called game, and game. This is going to have a uh, so level. We need to tell it it's a struct. It's a struct level. It's going to be an array of levels. There will be ten to start, and array of pointers. Okay. Then we're also going to have an integer called current level and we're also going to create a new file and save this as game.c okay so we need to include our rogue.h and then we're going to paste our game loop into here so paste this and cut it out paste it in there Cool. And then in our menu loop function, we will create the new game. So game doesn't need to be a pointer. And we will initialize uh, game uh, game dot current level to be zero. And zero will basically mean start a new game. Okay, so this is going to take that game game object in. So we'll do game star game. Um, and we should do constant because we don't want it to change. So constant game star game. I should really be using this constant keyword a lot more, but anyways. Um, okay. And then before we create a new level, we will do an if statement and we're going to say if game current level is equal to zero, then we create a new level. and we will save it um, instead of saving it to this level pointer we're going to save it to game levels at game current level and then we will increment this value so it's no longer at zero okay now to avoid having to change all these levels down here. We're just gonna say level equals uh, game level current level. 
but we need to subtract one because we incremented it up here. Okay, now we will make a void render function. And we are, this will take in a game pointer game. And this will be where we call our, all our uh, draw functions. So uh, clear, print game hub, and draw level will be in there. So paste those in there. And then call render from here. Pass it game. Um, okay, and instead of level, it's going to be this whole thing here. Cool, save that. Now, let's see. So we need to call game loop from our main and we need to pass it our game object. Now this is not a pointer. So, and this is expecting a pointer. So we need to dereference it by putting the ampersand there. That makes it a pointer and makes it all good. Okay, so we just did a lot of changes. Let's see if it runs. It doesn't. Okay. Um, ah, darn it. Okay, so this can't be constant, I think is what that's saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm kind of scared to run it now because I have no idea what's going to happen. But, oh, also when we die, we want our current level to go back to zero. So just copy this. Basically, when we die, we will start a new level. Okay, cool. So let's make it, make run, see what happens. Start game. Seems to work. Okay, so now with those changes, whoa, <laughs> clearly we have some of our changes made some logic, uh, logic errors, but Okay, let's kill two spiders. Come here. There we go. Okay, so we've killed two spiders. We're like well into our game. Let's go back to the menu by hitting Q. And then we will return to our game and let's see what happens. Boom, same level. So yeah, um, which means now we could uh, we could like go to the next level and then return to the same level and yeah it gives us gives us a, a bit more flexibility and it decouples our code which is a good thing for sure so yeah anyways a, a lot of stuff happening hopefully you uh, understood what was going on feel free to ask any questions if i if i went too fast in any any areas and and want some more explanation. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys.